Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the stranger things, uh, maybe informative things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and all that other fun stuff. I am Vin Stone, with you each and every week, um, doing the show, as always, from LGC Actual, joined by Jill Bryant and um, Pedro Mateus. Man, (laughs) wasn't it a fun pre-show? Didn't everybody have a good time? Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> it's uh, always darn updates. <laughs> kind of one thing we genuinely need to do at some point, but putting it off is setting up our own Jitsi box, which for me, that just means another computer I have to have in here and another point of failure. Aww. But it will prevent things like, hey, look, surprise change in Jitsi. I'm like, okay, so let's redo all this real quick. But hey, we are here. We are live. We're doing that things. Um, I got a bunch of stuff on my plate. I'm looking forward to playing with this. This is the best microphone in the universe. <laughs> oh, God. There's none more superior. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for our audio listeners, I'm holding up. What am I holding up, Pedro? What's it look like? Amazon Basics. <laughs> it looks like a microphone. Yes. <laughs> a microphone. It is, and in it fact. It looks like it hasn't melted yet. <laughs> not yet. I've only plugged it in once to test it. Just like, hey, do I get signal through this? This is Amazon Basics microphone. It's a dynamic microphone that... I'm so cheap, I even bought it used. And uh, we're going to be doing a, I'm going to be doing a little demo video. Plus, I'm going to be showing some people how to set stuff up on the cheap. So there is method to my madness. Mm-hmm. Also, we're testing out um, how to do a lot of post-production. Um, one of the things I've built with this system is, you know, all of our audio, EQing, compression, all that is done live to tape to air so you're getting everything and i'm abusing some uh, compression and leveling things making one doing one of them is absolutely doing the wrong thing man in real time to uh effectively give us like a wave writer effect like it's if somebody was actually sitting running the board so you know you see me over here a lot and i'm playing around with stuff i've been getting that dialed in for the past couple of weeks so i think i got it i'm happy about that but the big thing I want to talk to everyone about is uh video games because hey we, we do video games on occasion we, we've we been known um it's called linux gamecast come on people <laughs> what are you talking about yeah, what, we what don't play games. games you monster no that's for kids <laughs> Oh man, my generation's going to be the first legit, like when we're shopping for like the nursing homes, we're like, what's, what's bandwidth? All right. Has that not worked? We got fiber. Okay. Can we do land parties? All right. This is going to, this is going to be a real thing, man. Prep, start prepping for it. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be the first update to Left 4 Dead 2. That's something we play in the after shows and it's on Saturdays, man. It's a good, you know, just get anybody in. And uh, we always do like Team LGC versus um, Chat Realm, which is fun. It's great. And we're mm-hmm. reigning. Every time we've kept score, we've won. So mm-hmm. undefeated. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. Um, there's going to be the first update to that game in a decade. And that's rolling out tomorrow. So barring the meteor. I, I know you're tempted to say aliens, but I think we'll power through if we get aliens, man. Um, Jordan and I are going to be firing that up. So I'll put it out an announcement in Discord and let everyone know if you want to come play. If not, it's mainly just going to be me and Jordan playing around. But hey, more the merrier. That's going to start around 7. We'll go live around 7.30. So have your ass together. Because we're just going to go on that. We're not like, oh, I'd love to play, but I need to download and I can't. F-. No, no, no. And it's like, if you're in, you're in. <laughs> we'll go at it. If you're not, hey, man, what evs? <laughs> Joe, you wrote something, so you have to go last. Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been spending the week uh, basically playing around with the with the Pinebook Pro, and I'm really glad that I ordered this uh, EMMC to USB adapter so that I could just pull the EMMC module out and flash it with whatever I want, because I've soft break that pine book more than once now. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so that's really handy to have. You just I... crack open the bottom, pull Man. the thing out, plug it in there, bloop. Done. <laughs> that has been on my, I need to buy one of those forever because yes, I know those feels, but not to that regularity, but I'm like, 
Oh, this would be a lot easier if I didn't have to go get the thing, plug this in. Can I even write to that? Okay, we can flash that like that. Yeah, <laughs> just boop. Done. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> glad it's working for you. <laughs> Jill. Oh, boy. Well, remember, Ven, we also have the Friday Night Fubar Community Night on this Friday <laughs> as well. That's at my leisure, so keep reminding me. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, I was just re remembering that. And uh, I've actually been sick the last few days. It's not like we haven't had any fires here in California. So I think all this darn pollution in the air is just real. It, I've been having fevers like the last few days. Not fun. Of like and, what, 103? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how. They haven't been that high, <laughs> but just enough to be irritating and hard to get stuff done. So I've been doing a lot of watching of Linux podcasts and catching up on some I need to, <laughs> some I needed to. So that's been good. I had, had enjoyed watching some DOS Geek videos and, and more Big Daddy Linux and just all the things. <laughs> mm. All right. So yesterday the internet kind of exploded um, with cheer and celebration because um, something from the long, long ago, which was cut down with no ceremony whatsoever, was the Linux Journal, and it seems to be back. Maybe. Yes. I was uh, so excited yesterday when I heard this announcement. Um, Artharen had put this in chat yesterday. Thank you, Artharen. And I saw it all over tw Twitter. And yeah, so just over a year ago on August 7th, 2019, Linux Journal said it was shutting its doors for good. It, it didn't have any uh, finances left. And wow, wonderful. Now they are back under the ownership of Slashdot Media, who also owns Slashdot and SourceForge. And back in the day, Fresh Meat, if all of you remember that. And they quoted, we're ecstatic to be able to take the helm at Linux Journal and ensure that this legendary Linux resource and community not only stays alive forever, but continues to grow and improve. I like those words. <laughs> and right now, the Linux Journal, they're looking for Linux enth enthusiasts and writers to contribute. So uh, just go to the link on their page and uh, you can uh, get involved. And I'm just, I'm so excited to be able to use Linux Journal now as a source again for LWW. They were always the, the first uh, website I would go to to check Linux news. So I'm excited they'll be back. And I'm hoping the original members of Linux Journal, like Carly Fairchild, Kyle Rankin, Doc Searles, and Catherine Druckmann, can, uh, will be back uh, writing their great articles. And so I'm just I just want the group to be back again, but I know that that may not completely happen. But but I think a lot of them will be back writing articles and getting involved. I went looking <laughs> around. I went creeping. It's, is it really creeping when they're following me? I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, let's let's go check the people that were um, you know doing the publishing and all that um, with Linux Journal. And I'm like, what? Huh? What? Oh, that's back. Okay. No, in all fairness, they've moved on to do other things. But you're thinking slash yeah. dot media, and I'm thinking, okay, you mean <laughs> biz X. Yeah, that, that's yeah. not your standard made up Venn word. That's the holding <laughs> company of slash dot media. And yeah, that there's there's my legitimate warrior right there. It's like oh slash dot right. Oh yeah, they they don't even try to like hide the ads as stories these days. Okay, but um. It does look like they're setting it up for slash dot type stuff. Just that's what, what did you get out of it, Pedro? I read that and I'm like, you're looking for submissions, but there's not an automation system, kind of like slash dot with voting, but send us in some stories. We publish the content. Uh, thanks. Pat on the head. Here's some ads. Possibly. Um, although I do hope, I do hope I'm wrong uh, and right. they actually do pay people. But no, the thing that struck me on the little thing there is that oh yes um we own and operate slash dot and sourceforge two iconic open source software and technology websites that have been around for decades and then it's like self-awareness set in and they go we didn't always own sourceforge we acquired it in 2016 <laughs> yes, it wasn't our fault you guys it wasn't us so yeah <laughs> but we made the decision to buy it oh <laughs> 
<laughs> Deliberately. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, wait and see, because uh, I, uh, BizX is not malicious in any way, but they, they collect old sites, like things mm -hmm. from 20 years ago, and they just kind of sit with them. They don't seem to really do much with them. Maybe it's going to change with this. Uh, so, yeah. They could have picked a higher something. resolution image for the header to... <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> if you go on the article, uh, the Linux journal <laughs> picture... Yeah, that that's they their picked, old... That's, uh, that's yeah. stretched. <laughs> There's a lot of JPEG <laughs> compression on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Plasma shell. KDE and Vulcan. QuickTime. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I... One of the things that I've been shouting around for a while <laughs> is to get some sort of Vulcan-based compositor to do the same things that GLX currently does. We can call it VKX. And there is work being done in that in Wayland, which we won't see for another decade, but... It's just um, 10 years away, man. I'm tired of Vietnam. <laughs> KD seems to be doing something kind of along those lines. Uh, they will... Well, they uh, one of the developers, we, since they got their hands on K, uh, QT 515, they decided, you know what? There's a Vulcan backend to this. Let's try and use it. And yeah, they, they've uh, managed to do uh, quite a lot uh, with getting just the base UI, not the compositor. It's just for the base UI elements, the actual desktop environment itself, that is currently almost completely running with Vulcan. There's a couple of low-level OpenGL that's being used for rendering the thumbnails when you mouse over something on the panel. And uh, they created some custom shaders uh, over the years. Those will need to be ported over uh, to Spur-V or literally anything that can speak Vulcan. And I was reading those two. It's like, oh, that certainly explains a number of things about KD5, doesn't it? No. And its propensity to mm. crash. I don't know. <laughs> I, man, you know what? I, I just want to applaud you from taking a break for hating on Gnome to like, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, it's always the ones up, you folks. love you criticize the most, right? <laughs> so, yeah, my first thought was, uh, was like, oh, right. Because KD, did you personally find KD just a wee too stable? Maybe not. Um, <laughs> it's going, uh, what is it? QT515 ships with this as a tech preview. So as pages point out, some things are kind of invisible, but I got to admit, it's kind of neat seeing the uh, KD menu with like the Mesa but, oh, uh, I, but, <laughs> just like, oh, oh yeah, how, how, how many furps are you getting? It, um, <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, they get two, but that's because they're doing the clever uh, system optimization thing of only updating the bit that needs to be updated, which is the blinking cursor. Twice every second, that's it. <laughs> I was kind of worried. I was looking through the six comments on this article, and I'm like, I wonder if somebody's like, why are you running Telegram? Telegram's not open source. Open source. And nope. Didn't say one. Nah. <laughs> Get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like progress is also moving a lot quicker than people thought, and that they're planning, hopefully, for KDE Plasma. Six will be the first to get the full Vulcan love. <laughs> so that's well, actually if KDE cool. four and uh, <laughs> five were anything to go by, I look forward to KDE six point forty six so that I can start <laughs> using it. <laughs> You know, I understand it's not going to be until the fourth quarter of 2032 when this launches it with XFCE, but I don't really want to bring uh, like the hardware acceleration into my desktop. Uh, I mean... Is it going to make my window instantly disappear when I minimize it faster? <laughs> <laughs> you can actually do that, and you can do that by uh, also avoiding tearing, which is part of the whole GLX thing, and I hopefully what Vulcan will have accomplish. To worry. Just, uh, tearing, just close your eyes. <laughs> you should also close your eyes to the YouTube comments that mention tearing. Hmm. But uh, yeah. you mentioned hating on GNOME, so... Um, okay. 
<laughs> Might as well. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> uh, the Gnome Extensions uh, rebooted initiative. Basically, uh, fine folks at the uh, Gnome team decided, you know what? Uh, these uh, extensions, they've basically been the one thing that have made our desktop environment usable to just about everyone oh, else. What? What? Yeah. They <laughs> no, dude. Now listen, they're going to add proper document. That's going to take all the fun out of it. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually going to explain how people are supposed to think that they've been doing for the past however long Gnome 3 has been out. And um, yeah, they're actively trying to improve how extensions work and how they themselves uh, collaborate with the developers that are making their desktop environment worth a damn. Uh, the <laughs> um, basically, there's a lot of functionality um, that's been lacking from GNOME 3, and that's clearly evident because if you go look at the extensions, you can see that there's hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. So. Hopefully, by doing this, they'll be able to get a bit of self-awareness and realize just how much functionality they removed from the massive, wholly popular uh, thing that was GNOME 2. How long ago was that, Pedro? Uh, <laughs> Um, How long ago was 2012? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eight years. <laughs> Ish, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the fact that you have to use extensions in the first place to get basic functionality working in GNOME is one of the reasons I actually had stopped using it for years. Um, but I'm, I'm just so happy they are addressing this issue because uh, along with... Uh, you know, just having to use extensions, having them break from version to version is just so annoying. So I'm so happy yeah. they're finally focusing on this because GNOME has really come a long way. It's a lot faster than it used to be. And I'm liking the look of it even more. <laughs> And um, it's just, it's it nice. It used to be slow by design. <laughs> they designed <laughs> yes. it to be deliberately Sl slow. To slow. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I look forward to the emails on that next week, man. Uh, I don't I have anything against GNOME. The only time I've ever used GNOME is to, I know how to open a terminal with a search bar. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you hit the uh, Windows key or meta or super or whatever you want to call it. Type terminal. There, there we go. <laughs> I gotta think yes. that maybe extensions <laughs> is one of those things that definitely looked better on paper. <laughs> We're not going to develop our desktop environment. The community will do it. Oh, where's the documentation to do that? Well, if if you have the flexibility what? for that, right, and to get more people involved and to make stuff, um, they're, they're they're working it out, man. Yeah, they are. They're really. I'm glad they are. It. Finally, yeah. <laughs> and I, I would love the GNOME two extension to bring the menu back. Just, just make that default in the OS, so you can just click a button and turn it back on. Oh, <laughs> it's like the most popular extension is the one that yeah. turns the dash back into a panel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make it a circle just you know i i don't know man like i that, like i said i i say it with no short amount of i was like i figured out how to get a terminal open so i could install because <laughs> i had to sit there i i played with it um i did play with gnome 3 um just when i was a b testing on these two boxes mm. and ooh, mm -hmm. uh <laughs> they don't have the horsepower to run M3. They got the horsepower to run XFC. But yeah. I, if that, I actually want some feedback. If somebody's like, man, I use GNOME 3 and I'm used to it. I know how it works. And you never had a problem with it. Um, I'd be interested just to I want to see a screenshot of your extension screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and there's even an extension plugins that that shows all your extensions. <laughs> even your extensions, Ubuntu extensions. that now uses GNOME three out of the box, it comes with four. I think they're up to four extensions preloaded now. Yeah, you have yeah. To, isn't no. the whole point though, is so you add what you want. You know, hey, we developed the base core, and everyone else does all the other stuff. Yeah, the, there's some there's some good things about that as well. It just needs to be un more unified and more docu better documentation. This, that's a good more step. stable. That's a good step. Yeah. Documentation. <laughs> Let's get this hammered on. And it seems like they're on it. Well, <laughs> happiness and excitement 
last week when everyone headed over to NVIDIA and they bought their 3080s and they started getting delivered the day after, all 40 to 60 that, you know, the scalper ordered, then he or she put them on eBay and began to sell them. And all, all was right with the world. It was a beautiful time. Well, maybe if you were lucky enough to get one, or maybe if you have one coming down the pipe, man, <laughs> um, here's something you can think about is uh, if you do the video editing or anything like that, um, like we do, you're looking for something, you know, a little more pro oriented. And something I use here is DaVinci Resolve. And like clockwork, they, uh, this is available for Linux. I just wanted to give this a quick mention because for the Ampere GPUs, now work uh, with DaVinci Resolve under Linux and Windows. I don't know about Mac, man. I know if I'm on a <laughs> Mac, I'm getting scared these days. Like, uh, uh, if you, to, you're you know. not running an NVIDIA card on an official Mac, unless you have one that's really old. <laughs> well, you know, Hackintoshes are real, man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I just wanted to give that a quick mention to let everyone know. Uh, if you are one of the fortunate ones um, who ended up getting one, go try it. Let me know how it works out for you. But um, Pedro, you know more about this Pine stuff, but there is definitely a September update that's going on. Uh, I'm talking about the Pine Book Pro, you know, they do the Pine tab and they get the Pine Doc. A couple of quick mentions on that. The Pine Book Pro production has been halted for a few months. Shortage of LCD screens. I'm like, okay, maybe that's the thing. The Pine Dock, which we've talked about on this show, they're not pushing out to see. I'm going to say good on them because they don't quite have the HDMI out working just right just yet. And um, no date on Pine Tab production resuming. To this, this is a question I'll throw to Pedro is because, uh, you know, 1080p, I, that's one of the things I asked you um, before we went live. I'm like, hey, man, well, what type of screen does the Pine Book Pro you have on? He's like, 1080p. I'm like, okay, I buy that mother class 1080p. The Pine Tab, the, the sole reason I did not buy Pine Tab is because it's only got a 720p screen. And we were theorizing what would cause the shortage of 720p mother class. Yeah, the, mm. as it turns out, uh, there is one really popular device out there that has a 720p screen. You may have heard of it. It's called the Nintendo Switch, uh, the, <laughs> uh, which I can imagine that people being stuck at home because of everything that's going on that it's probably become even more popular uh, and like developing nations and low cost devices. Yeah. 720p screens i honestly there's a lot of reasons out there and they're all probably wrong but i'm sure uh, pine will scream in our direction uh if they'd like to correct us the thing that stuck out to me was the 13 and 1 multi-boot mostly because they had a picture on it and uh i have a very short attention span it was right at the top of the article and i saw it's like oh 13 and 1 multi-boot so you're <laughs> just making everyone's lives easier because that's all everyone's doing with a pine phone right about now <laughs> you know what that's not necessarily a bad thing people are saying i mean that yeah. is that's <laughs> like the competitive sport with your pine devices <laughs> let's see how yeah it's like how weird a distro can you get to run yeah. on it <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that and i think it's very good of them to always be out and be like hey this is what's going on this is you know no mysteries just go ahead and cut the uh speculation I'll fat that news. Yep. I'm going to say good on you <laughs> lot. But uh, something I ran across on Reddit, ironically enough, was someone working on a Reddit app. Um, <laughs> I know <Nah. laughs> I didn't see that coming. I should have saw it. But uh, this dude's creating a Reddit app for Linux. This is the first post from the app itself we're seeing here on the screen. Hopefully you're going to see a screenshot as well. Yeah, because he posted it from his app. And I'm like, okay. That's neat. A desktop app. Oh, okay. Let's put another Electron. No, it's not Electron. This is a Python plus GTK3. Man. <laughs> there is going to be a GitHub link in the show notes if you want to play around with it. I just think, you know, something like this is worth keeping an eye on, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Because it's so nice to have a GUI option in this space. Because we have actually several really good Reddit uh, command line apps like Reddit Shell and Reddit Terminal Viewer that I've, I've both of those I really enjoy using. But it's nice to have a GUI option as well. <laughs> a good one. At this point, <laughs> I think at this point, I'm just so uh, jaded with uh, attempts to make native uh, apps for web stuff. We've seen the Twitch one, the YouTube one. 
<laughs> Reddit one. There's been more than one Reddit one. Uh, the Twitters. There's been so many attempts to make any of these uh, kinds of applications take off, and they always fall flat on their face. I hope this one doesn't. I do. I really do. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Dude, here's the thing, though. The, I like the idea. Even the Twitch thing. I'm like, oh, Twitch. But another thing that's really not helped a lot of the projects that you just mentioned take off is Electron. Because you're like, oh, I want to open a Twitter. What, where do my memory? What, why is my CPU fence cutting on? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> this, we're not joking, man. I mean, Discord, you're guilty of those too. Come on. Um, yes. Oh, it's that 1.2 gigabytes for a chat app? What? Yep. Listen, man, you don't understand how to computer. Okay, leave that to do. I can't, like, what would we be like a computer? I was going to say professionals. Can, I don't know. Anyway, this, this is going to be native. You can play with it. But I think the biggest deterrent to desktop stuff i'm gonna say for your average user is that mobile device you're sitting on your desk within your eyesight right now because if, if i go to check twitter i'm like boop, boop, okay yeah <laughs> exactly i usually have it open like right here <laughs> oh i have an entire monitor dedicated to um <laughs> tweet deck tweet deck yeah. again i said average user <laughs> A sane, to be fair, a most, sane, that's what healthy, most... No, no, it's not. A sane, healthy person doesn't even know what a tweet deck is. Nah, not yeah. tweet deck, but they spend most of their days on social media. That That's what the average user does. They're either watching YouTube videos or not even YouTube. Most of, More likely Instagram. TikTok is kind of a hot topic right now. But uh, yeah, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, Facebook's not doing terribly well lately. Uh, but yeah. Twitter and Instagram, definitely. Jill. <laughs> Nastadon. <laughs> yeah, there's Nastadon. <laughs> yes. And uh, again, average user. Telegram. Telegram. Actually, Telegram is pretty heavily used. <laughs> so if we're going to talk about Discord would like a word with you. Um, <laughs> oh, IRC, both of you be quiet peasants. Um, <laughs> yes, that's true that. <laughs> the, if we're going to talk about federated stuff, this next story works just fine because apparently. Yes. Somebody didn't clean the bottom of their Triforce, and it started growing something under it. Oh, so this is Supia Search. This is the, the new search engine for the peer-to-peer -peer federated peer tube video video search um, video site that's like YouTube, and um, it 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 works pretty well. I I did the search word Linux and got lots of different podcasts. Didn't quite come up with our LWWs and Linux Gamecasts episodes that were put there by Ven years ago, but I got just about everything else. <laughs> and it's still in the works. <laughs> it's still in the works. It's still new. And, you know, the uh, PeerTube developers have been working also on the ability to do peer to peer live stream, do a peer to peer live stream for a while. And once you know, that is implemented. Remember when BitTorrent tried that? Did it just ate yeah. mm -hmm. kind of pool? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so true. But I think if PeerTube does have finally go to the live stream, that will be a game changer. And having the search fe feature will definitely be important. <laughs> They need that kind of exposure if they're ever going to have people look at it. Because currently... Uh, it's just not happening. But one of the things that stuck out to me was uh, the a posteriori uh, note that they had. Uh, and they are very clear that it is a moderated search engine. Mm -hmm. And um, they said that they recently announced a change in uh, the indexing policy for the list that they are currently uh, indexing to align with the policies uh, with the services that they offer. And the three points that they point out are compliance with French law, compliance mm -hmm. with terms and conditions of use, obviously, and respect for our moderation plicy. Uh French only for now. So I don't know uh, what a moderation plicy is. I'm pretty sure they meant policy, but there's an O missing there. Uh, <laughs> and I was just thought I just thought it was uh, kind of funny that we're at the mercy of the French if we want to search our federated <laughs> tubes. Come on, man. It's all, 
What do the Portuguese have against the French? Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, not much at all, but I think I've been living in the UK long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just trying to like see how many buses you can? <laughs> I'm burning all the bridges. All right. Okay. Yeah. So everyone, just please d donate to PeerTube and make this service better. They have lots of uh, new ideas uh, in the works, and as well as that live streaming, we want to get working. And they are just an awesome service, and I love their new logo and artwork. That it's looks really like a, yeah, it looks like a Triforce <laughs> with a disease growing out of the bottom of it. It does. Yeah. That um, like, no, that's a Triforce hat. No, no, um, no, it... We got to think about this though, man. Peer two instances, uh, they will be referenced in the. So we're going with just sepia, right? Sepia search. Uh, they're not going to try like, hey, look, we're doing a weird tech enunciation of it. So. It's going to be mm -hmm. based on a list of the instances they maintain at instances.joinpeer2.org. And most importantly is the code and how it's working, the internals. It's all going to be open source. So even if you're like, oh, well, at, le at least you're trying. It's never going to work, but at least you're oh, trying. Oh, doing something yeah. with it. That, that's kind of yeah. amazing. <laughs> so I like the effort. Um federated video surface i like the dream I always have is mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a big part this is a big chunk of this always been search and yep. filters for search like built-in filters like I, I i i don't want to see adult films when i'm searching for linux <laughs> Oh, you just don't you have a Linux tab on TweetDeck? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that going on. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But yeah, man, go go check that out. Uh, oh, right. Before we get out of here, we do have a special segment. A, a yes, special segment. we do. <laughs> oh right. my gosh! <laughs> oh Jill's boy, the, here it Jill's comes. the only one excited about this. So no, on. yeah, <laughs> true that. So, so <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, actually, we had talked about this last November when it was announced that the Microsoft Ignite 2019 oh. conference Edge is coming to Linux. <laughs> <laughs> so, and in July, they released the download landing page. So we knew it was coming this year and soon because Microsoft said it was coming this year. And it looks like next month we get to do the test pre preview of it. And uh, now we are on the edge of the precipice, <laughs> which is cool. But I was telling Ben earlier in the pre pre sojin the so one. Soon. So <laughs> pre pre super sojin. <laughs> Sozen, okay. Hello, Sozener. I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't invited <laughs> pre, pre, to the Sozen. <laughs> no, during the pre-show Zen, <laughs> um, I, we were talking about it, and I said, "Well, the only good thing to me, really, about Edge is that it it actually was a fast browser. <laughs> it is a fast browser. You said and when was. it came out." Yeah, it's not as fast, you know, all the other browsers are just as fast now, but they did tweak it and modify it. And this is before it became part of a, it was Chromium based. So, you know, one, one thing that I'm really concerned fast. about, um, <laughs> I, I find myself constantly um, concerned about, you know, especially on a uh, 24 thread. Thread Ripper is browser speed. Yes. Does that web page take well, two seconds instead of one to load? I would <laughs> yeah. throw it out the window if it did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a whole lot faster than Internet Exploder. <laughs> so I have to say that's that. A, that's interesting that you bring that up because that's actually my question. One of the big selling points of uh, the new Edge, at mm -hmm. least on Windows, is the Internet Explorer compatibility mode, which lets you run Java and lets you run flash, flash and it yeah. lets you run basically <laughs> all of the old stuff that you really shouldn't be running at this point but um it lets you it just has a little sandboxed what is effectively a built-in uh internet explorer sandbox that lets you run that stuff mm -hmm. is that gonna work on linux absolutely I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I actually do hope so. Actually, yeah. <laughs> One of my theories was, okay, Microsoft, keep things challenging. First off, only release this as a snap or possibly a flat pack. Just, just yeah. do that for me, please. <laughs> I don't think hey, they I want, want any more hate. <laughs> no, no, no app image. <laughs> snap or flat pack. Just, just, just do that for old man, Ben. 
I, I, I was thinking, man, I've never seen a single like diehard fan of Edge. You know, you have the, you know, you say something good about Chrome and the Firefox, rah, rah, rah. And you say something about Firefox, but Chrome, Chrome, Chrome. And then you get the people like running Brave and Vivaldi. And I, I just, it's basically Firefox and Chrome with different skin jobs on it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. So is this. <laughs> this. This is more Chrome with a different skin job. Yeah. yeah. Firefox is all out there by itself, like, hey, let's do web standard and stuff. I don't think Google's intention was like, ah, well, you know, everyone's just adopted Chromium. Uh, and all that fun stuff. <laughs> what if gobble, it does gobble. this though? What, what if what if Microsoft? What if Microsoft drops a little edgy special sauce in this? And they're like, you know what? If you use Edge, by the way, only with Edge, you can use your Xbox Live um, game streaming X-Cloud, stuff. Xbox, Xbox Game Cloud, Cloud something. Yeah, yeah. X, S, Box, <laughs> X. Just, just be safe, throw an extra X on that. Hey, at least you'll be able to do that on Linux. Play those games and stream it. I'm just good. <laughs> Hopefully. Look, if that is the only way that you can get uh, or play uh, Xbox uh, Cloud games on Linux... There's going to be a lot of people using Edge on Linux. Yeah. Well, that's going to be one of the first things they install, especially if they're coming over from another operating system. Yeah. Since Microsoft is also <laughs> bu- buying all the game studios. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's that little <laughs> spirally icon that's blue and green. That there. Here's a brilliant idea. Here's a brilliant <laughs> idea. If you're going to do that, Microsoft, just go ahead and make Edge available on Steam. Save me a step. No, uh, there you go. <laughs> Well, be, <laughs> there is a software section on Steam, yes. <laughs> yes, that would be funny. Oh, oh that would oh, be amazing. Matthew has to put it in Lutris, so one click edge install. <laughs> there you go, man. That'd be brilliant. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to do any type of victory lap and say, I guarantee you this. Why did it? It's like, I bet money that this will be out before. Um, December of this year, and looks like that's going to be a thing. But I think we all, everyone's like, yeah, yeah. Is anyone going to try to add more of a curiosity? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yes, definitely. <laughs> well, you can burn both of them. I'm not going to touch. Them. Um, <laughs> oh, we have to test all things on Linux so we can <laughs> we can talk about it during the show. <laughs> I want to see the fire red up close yeah. and personal. <laughs> Ah, I'm just telling you, man, by, by the end of December, they'll be calling me on Edge. Okay. Here's another thing. What if you can watch Netflix at 1080p? Ah, yeah. And Amazon oh, Prime. And UHD. We talked about extensions earlier. Yeah. There's an extension yeah. for that. Yeah, there is. I don't know, beautiful people. Hey, uh, we're going to jump into a slice of pie. Before that, we have to thank uh, some beautiful people. Uh, we do want to give a mention to last week. Uh, we got a PayPal donation, a few bucks. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, that was a whole thing. 50 of them. <laughs> right? Yeah. And that, $50. Hey, man, this is a small operation. That means something, you know. It's not like, yep. oh, look. <laughs> so uh, that was from a not mouse f- from PayPal. And they wrote, hey, it's new here. Holding on to Linux as so many techie simps switch to Mac. Smiley face, much love, heart. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Well not said, mouse. a not mouse. <laughs> that was actually um, really, really nice. And uh, you see that big 50 come up in the uh, notifications like, oh. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, another thank you I need to send out. I was trying to be sneaky about it. It sneaky. comes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a lot of noise happening under my desk. Okay. Uh, Velcro and things. Uh, uh, Mike G, uh, he seems uh, hell bent on uh, getting us things from our uh, wish zones. So um, he sent a note Use this for weightlifting or for groceries. Thanks for your contribution to the Linux community. Mike G, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you Mike very, G. very much. Always. He's so <laughs> much feelings. That's great. Awesome. I'm so yeah, happy no, he got uh, you that. How long do you think you can hang from that? Uh, I don't know. They, they say the, the max weight on these is like 50 kilos, so probably 50. half a second. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> no, I do mean, well, see, you're going to struggle because it's going to be involuntary. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, I actually got to try it out already because I sent uh, Mike G the uh, the note on Discord at the time. It's like, how did you know I needed to go grocery shopping? So yeah, no, on the way home, I didn't have to stop and adjust the bag that I was carrying on my right hand, like I have to mm. do every single time because it keeps sliding away because it wasn't a hook. So, thank you. Very nice. <laughs> I'm just awesome. saying, if anybody's walking around and you see Pedro halfway up the shard, encourage him <laughs> to keep going and start filming. But yes, Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> you act like oh. Velcro doesn't have any like sheer strength to it. Like pulling it straight out, <laughs> sheer strength on Velcro is pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, if I tighten that, it stays. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Thanks, beautiful people. Uh, if you want to kick us a few bucks, you like what we do, and you're like, hey, man, you're worth a buck a week, uh, we're wholly listener-financed, man. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You can see what we do the other six days of the week. We got Discord. We got some extra bonuses. We like two extra shows we do, podcast form and video form. Um, a bunch of other fun. We got merch. You want to like put Pedro? I got, I'm making a custom Pedro shirt for myself. You can have one. I'm sorry, but we have a bunch of other shirts at store.loadingsteamcast.com. We got mugs and all that fun stuff, um, including Hell Elks <laughs> language. <laughs> no, I said. <laughs> well, you're gonna argue with it's what a you brand just name, said. Technically, it's a brand name <laughs> for a family safe show. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm going to have to edit the show anyway. So. <laughs> acceptable. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> family acceptable show. And friendly is a bit uh, yeah, accepted a bit by of a all families. Oh. <laughs> so beautiful, people. Um, thanks for letting us do the show. It's awesome. Yes. Um, share it if you like or if not. I mean, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Be nice. So, uh, time for a slice of pie. 3.1. <laughs> Mm, yummy. Now we're going to start this off with something I like to call involuntary electrocution. Um, <laughs> super capacitors, uninterruptible power supplies for Raspberry Pi. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is five caps of death, man. Um, <laughs> eh, they're not that big. No, man. <laughs> uh, pff, man okay. Okay. How, how, what, what, what's the maximum size of a uh, capacitor that you will allow me to discharge on you? Uh. Um, <laughs> let's see because Pedro's thinking one thing and I'm thinking about how far I can launch him <laughs> <laughs> okay if you're just going to remove the projectile from a bullet and put a capacitor at the end and just no, shoot it no, at me no, okay no. that'll do some damage <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you you won't be conscious when you're at the wall <laughs> Yeah, if that capacitor explodes, you would be flying across the Rapid screen. Rapid discharge of a capacitor. Uh, so this has been put together. Um, for my convergent restoration, I decided to build a RASCII to replace some SCSI hard drives. So this is basically a chunk of caps, man, um, tied up to power a pie in case of emergency. Uh, just long enough to safely shut down a beagle boat because, hey, man capacitors um we're still working on that tech man um and it works um i suggest if you're not familiar with electronics not to build one of these and unless you record it and send me the video yes <laughs> <laughs> there will be a lot of pretty pretty fireworks oh uh, it'll, it'll be short and sweet man uh yeah so we're gonna get a little demo i do believe in the video we're gonna plug it in and maybe I don't know, man. Just just pretend. What, what <laughs> <they mean? laughs> nothing, nothing was shown on the screen. Okay. <laughs> no, and I can't see the actual voltage capacity of the um. You, you tested with your things. Tongue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, just no, flip no. it to the other side of the PCB and go. Hey. It, 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 it's, it's like a round nine volt. Don't worry. <laughs> Twelve volts each. All right. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, I, after show, I'll explain things to Pedro because I can do it for a minute. <laughs> Let's talk about e-paper. No capacitors will be. Well, actually, you get my point. 
Oh, well, this is something that uh, Ven put in his show notes that I know my Steve husband will love. This Raspberry <laughs> Pi project um, uh, is combined with an e-paper display, shows movies extremely slow, and, you know, the, e the cool e-ink displays. And the movies actually, um, for every two minutes of screen time per 24 hours, it just takes under three months <laughs> for a 110 minute film to play. And, you know, this is really cool because uh, all these beautiful films, including, including 2001 A Space Odyssey, each frame of that film is a piece of art. And this captures that. You know, you can hang it on your wall. Uh, the creator uh, bought, got a, an IKEA frame and uh, put the e ink paper in it and has a, as a frame on his wall so he can watch the the film play very very slowly so we're looking at this a couple <laughs> pieces that you can stick together for about 120 pounds total all yeah around. that's what you're going to be looking mm -hmm. at and that'd be a fun afternoon project you could even put like a good space movie in it too so i don't think yeah that oh don't say that to steve husband or what space or, or what's steve gonna do to me look at me sternly <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> well, one of you the reasons, <laughs> yeah, one of the reasons we actually bought a Samsung Frame TV is to do just that to show frames from some of our favorite Easter films. Me? I mean, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> 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 no, well, he, he he watches you on LWW sometimes, <laughs> and Linux Gamecast on our our Samsung Frame TV. Sternly. Yeah. and you know, really, honestly, this is a brilliant idea because many of you know the best films out there, including Star Trek and Star Wars, are works of art, and they're is individual seeing frames. A theme here? <laughs> <laughs> It might be Velcroed or taped to the back of the frame, yes. <laughs> but these individual frames compositionally deserve to be hung on our walls. They're beautiful, um, like Psycho, for instance. Psycho is a really, <laughs> really good film <laughs> and one that this uh, developer uh, had fun with uh, playing in his house. Very, very, very slowly. Slow movie play. <laughs> very. I'm trying to <laughs> very, do very maths slow. here. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what the <laughs> actual frame rate is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, There's 84,600 seconds in a day, and they say that that gives you about uh, two minutes of uh, a movie in 24 hours mm -hmm. so two minutes at 24 frames a second is uh, 2880. You, you, mm. Mm. Frames? <laughs> yes, so we but, divide but, but, that well, by no, no, 86,400. No. Pedro, Pedro, roll it back. You're going to be extracting these from a local video file, which is either going to be at 30 frames or 60, not 24. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maths. <laughs> Except oh, for... Oh, not point uh, 0.3 frames yeah. a second. Okay. <laughs> 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 Except if you're 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 running the old version of uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey, then it is a sorry, not frames. point, not three. It's zero point zero three, not yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, you're gonna have a you're going to have a video file of it, and like if you get it on DVD yeah. or if you get the um, it's you know, been Blu -ray, converted to thirty or sixty, it's yes, gonna be thirty or sixty. So yeah. that's yeah. gonna be your source. <laughs> but. Hey, man, yeah. that's cool. Maybe you have a cool project at home that you definitely want to play around with and tell us about. Maybe it involves Velcro, capacitors, possibly aliens. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can make tell us about that, Pedro. <laughs> uh, you can tell us about it in a multitude of ways. This is the internet after all. Though I would recommend searching some of the more unseemly sites because someone's probably already done something along those lines. But if you don't find any and you'd like to tell us about it, Go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and uh, fill out your name. Fill out your email, give us a subject, and give us your message. Make sure LWDW is the show that you're sending your feedback to. Otherwise, we might mistake it for some hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, we got a couple things uh, this week. First one is from Raymond. He's like, yo, man. Uh, I found a list for Linux, which I've noticed. I've gotten a lot of messages this past couple of weeks, man, for Linux compatible <laughs> ADO interfaces and future videos. I'm ADO. just learning my way with audio interfaces. I'm running on Ubuntu Studio 2010 KDE. Okay. 
Um, and I've just purchased a Motu Ultralight AVB interface. All right, right on. I got some Motus. Um, Ubuntu Studio recognizes the Motu. Audio fades in and out. Uh, is the Ultralight AVB interface compatible with Linux? Probably something you want to check before you buy them. Uh, don't quite understand this. Jack could help. I'm 60 with vision impairment, but wanting to learn. Thanks for sharing your videos. Raymond. Nice. <laughs> Wonderful, Raymond. <laughs> oh, Pedro, what should you do? Uh, there's a magnifier in KDE. The vision impairment uh, will not be that big an issue since you can make everything real big. Uh, but uh, as for the Motu bit, I have to defer to Ven. <laughs> yeah, Raymond, and I use a Magnus under uh, Ubuntu Mate, and that works really well as well because I am half blind. So uh, I understand. I understand the feels. <laughs> so I got to go back to my original thing. Uh, I did get back uh, in the same way, like not, not to be mean to anyone. Oh, I have one. Oh, no. <laughs> it, what, what are the reasons of like this stack existing is simply to say, hey, I do know this works, this works, this works, this works. Guaranteed. I got it to work. It works, you know, I'm not like, this is just like the half information people are like, I don't know if it works because, oh, what do you mean I have to use Jack and all that fun stuff. So I'm running this stuff with Ulsa, Pulse Audio, Jack, hammering it, doing the latency. Basically, I'm setting like my little personal money on fire. I'm like, okay, there's your information though. <laughs> but with a Motu, with something that's USB, if it's modern, I'm going to give everyone this for a little bit of advice. If it's got an internal DSP in it, if it has effects, compression, stuff like that, you're not going to be able to use it. Don't even think you're going to be able to use it. It's not going to happen. There might be a chance with AVB since you can connect to it over Ethernet. But I looked around a little bit and it seems like there are, in fact, two versions of it. One of them just doesn't work. So just stay away from anything with any type of internal processing. If you're looking for like a single channel, something like that, as much as the Internet hates, I will loves to hate on them, Behringer. Behringer's work, man. If you're looking for something new, out of the box, you want to mess around like 204, 404, they'll get the job done. The YouTuber specials, they all seem to work. <laughs> Scarlet, uh, focus rate Scarlet's, the i2, first, second, and third gen. Um, go for that. But with this, man, um, yeah, let, let, let me know. Because without one, if you got something that you think, you can send it my way. I'm not saying you send me that because those things are expensive. Uh, Send that back if you get a chance, if you can't get it working. Um, but if you can, uh, yeah, shoot me a note, man. I'm always curious to find out. All right, Pedro. Yes. <laughs> uh, Rydell, I wonder if it's mm -hmm. Jonathan. Uh, OBS RN Noise, uh, thank you for demonstrating this wonderful plugin. I've added it to my filters. P.S. How do you have so many different audio tracks in OBS for Discord, <laughs> games, etc.? <laughs> I'm using voice uh, voice me eater uh, and I have to manage all audio in it um, you go through different interfaces why would you do that? <laughs> because you want to have control over each individual track what do you mean by interfaces? <laughs> well it could be physical or it you could even set them up virtually if you're say running jack <laughs> are you saying like sinks? Your sources. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can set sinks, uh, sources for the sinks. Uh, but yeah, if you don't have, or if you don't want to learn Jack. You don't need <laughs> Jack. I'm not using Jack with OVS. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> But yeah, the, you can uh, absolutely s just have multiple audio interfaces like uh, USB DACs, or if you have a mixer that has a lot of different uh, channels, you could absolutely just uh, feed each individual application on Linux. Uh, if you're even if you're using Bavu Control, you could just feed each individual one to each of those. Uh, syncs and then you have a monitor sync if you don't want to merge them all uh and then just feed that into obs you could feed each individual one into obs and then just have the uh the monitor in your ear so you can hear everything that's going on 
This is why I make the videos. Um, yes. <laughs> I thought I'd be a stab at it, man. Probably what I'm Pedro. thinking he's asking is, by default, no one really covers this. I, 120 OBS 26 is coming out. We, we, world, you're getting a... This is how you OBS on Linux. I'm not going to do one. They're, they're going to change something in 26 that invalidates it. So... With your basic OBS setup, people always go to the audio tab. And they're like, oh, I have an input and an output. So you just have like your, um, what is it? Just like, I don't even remember what it looks like. Just like the one thing that says desktop audio and one that says like mic auxiliary. Don't use that. What you do in HC, now you set up a source, do what I do. You set up an audio pack. Then you can just add uh, also sync or a pulse audio. Don't use Jack. Jack's busted no BS, even though they won't admit it. Um, and you can add as many as you want. You can do, you know, closed caption, game music, Discord, Jordan, Pedro, Vin. Just roll it down like that. But it is going to be, a, now we're talking about voice meter. Voice meter banana is kind of like this uh, Quasimodo wannabe version of like Jack's cousins, friends, nephews, uncles, roommate from the university. It's hilarious, but it does like if you can do some primitive routing, but when I read that, I think you're on Windows. So all that's for naught because uh, I don't say this with like too much glee and joy. Windows is kind of primitive to do the stuff I'm doing. I don't even think it'd be possible to do what I'm doing under Windows. So I'm over to Linux. I can walk through it. I look forward to it. Yeah, go ahead and uh, sync up a pair of Bluetooth headphones in Windows and then try yeah. to use, say, Discord while okay. it's uh, going, oh, you have a voice thingy. Okay, we're just going to set your headset and the microphone in that headset mm -hmm. as the only uh, audio syncs. Okay. It's like, I'd like to hear the game or the YouTube video that I'm also listening to. Nope. Is just... nope. <laughs> <sighs> and you have to basically kill one of the syncs, basically the one that's not attached to the microphone, because that's another thing that Windows Audio does. Oh, you have that one device, it has output and uh, input. And if you just kill uh, the output that was attached to the input, the input dies too. Hmm. Ah, Windows. You just gotta put it down. You just gotta put it down, baby. Just let, let it go. Just let it yeah. go. Install Haiku like a normal person. <laughs> I have it. It's, it's on one of the laptops, actually. <laughs> Beautiful people. We gotta bounce out of here. We are over time, but... Let's hit everyone with some credits, because you're awesome. Yay! Yeah? Maybe I got the right ones. Let's find out. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Man, PipeWire is not production ready for anybody but the bold, the brave, the crashy, <laughs> the... Hey, PipeWire is very much in the state of like, hey, that's kind of working right now. <laughs> it plays YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> it can do YouTube and game audio at the same time. I tested it. <laughs> also, it's got to work with NetJack. Which I've told the Pipewire developer guy, human. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, uh, NetJack, <laughs> silence. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> Aw. Thank you to our executive <laughs> producers and producers. We love you all. And we got two new followers uh, uh, today during the show. That sounds like a uh, personal well, <laughs> problem. <laughs> well, one of the names we can't say. <laughs> so... <laughs> They did that to themselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you next week. Neuroelectros?